Good afternoon. Actually, it's good evening now, I guess, now, because it's getting darker earlier, thanks to winter, what do you call it? Daylight savings time changing. Um, welcome to my broadcast. This is episode eight, eight, 885. And to get to the point, ladies, don't fall for him. You know what you really want. It's worth holding out for it. I'll explain more about what that is and how you can do it, because I just watched that happen today a couple of times, and it really was bugging me. Before I jump into that, let me choose myself and maybe give you some information about why I'm at episode 885. You don't know what they are. Um, and we'll go from there. Hi, Heidi. Nice to see you in my broadcast. Um, I am, my name is Barry Selby, by the way. Hi, I'm Barry Selby. <laughs> in case you didn't really know that. I'm an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, author of the best selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, and a passionate champion for the divine feminine. I help women create balance in love, life, and business. Because I'm a passionate champion through my feminine, that's also what started these talks almost three years ago now, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart. So today we're up at episode 885. Yes, we're knocking them down, getting getting closer to 900, and then after that, probably 1,000. And so today I want to talk about a couple of things, particularly around the field of women. Well, there's two things going on, because I, I had some conversations with some amazing women today. Um, I was at a guy this morning, for those who don't know what to do on Sunday mornings. And it is Sunday, hence the casual attire. Um, I was going to change, but I didn't. Oh, well. Um, so this morning I was talking to a couple of women, and a couple of things became very evident to me. In one case, there's a woman who I met who's very attractive, probably 30s, somewhere in there. And I made a comment to her, and she was like, of course. She said, I said, she, it's, not, it's not so much she can't... It's like she can't find a relationship she wants because there are so many men who are chasing her, and she doesn't want any of them. And she's... I mean, she's scared to, but she's unwilling to settle, which I think is a great thing. Another conversation I had was this woman who basically felt there was nothing out there. She was basically feeling hopeless, couldn't find what she wanted, was feeling really kind of almost desperate. In both instances, one's lack, one's abundance, interestingly, paradigms, was this feeling about what is it they would have as a choice for a relationship. And either case, in both cases, in fact, the temptation was to settle for what they had. One was to settling for the place of um, picking one out of the many, just hoping it's going to be okay, like almost randomly guessing. The other one was going to be give up, not have anything. Neither one's a good choice. And I'm going to speak to this from one of you that may resonate. And now, now, one thing I've got to put in here, because I'm aware this is a conversation I've, had, I've heard before from some of the ladies I know who are into the personal growth, awakening, awareness, conversation with understand things more and more and so for a lot of women out there who are in that field there are apparently no good men according to them there's not enough men in this field there's more women than men hi Susie nice to see you thanks for joining the broadcast there's a um and by the way it's a Facebook live in case you're watching some rest of morning where it comes from and I've got the lights set up differently because I got no daylight coming in because it's five o'clock and it's already dark here in LA which is weird so I've got these lights right in my face so I don't know how good it looks on the screen it doesn't look that good to me <laughs> I'm going to adjust this over the next few days as we adjust to new ti new times and and uh, light availability. So, in both cases, there's the feeling that I have, and this is not true. Just no, sorry, let me finish the first thought. There are women who've done the personal growth work. That was the piece I was on, who basically have felt for a long time that there's not enough men out there. And and to be honest, I've been in the seminar training seminar arena personal growth work since the mid '80s. Done this a long time. And one of the best kept secrets, I would say, is that most of the seminars and teachings out there, there are way less men than women. Now, from a male point of view, that's awesome. Abundance, so much choice, kind of. But the truth is also is that the women aren't finding that the many men they're attracted to because they start doing this work and developing, they feel like there aren't any good men out there. Now, there may be this sudden temptation to settle for a man who hasn't done any work. Or... This temptation to say, you know what, I'm just going to give this journey up because I want to find a man that I don't care about the growth and I'll walk away from that. And that kind of parallels my uh, rubber band theory I talk about in my book, which I'll mention at the end. It's a challenge that we face when we're not willing to hold for what we really want. And in both cases, whether it's too many choices or no choice, there's a third option, which is to make a clear choice of what you really want. Now, it sounds easier than, it sounds um, easier said than done put it that way but I'm very aware of a couple of things one is ladies in particular it's not your job to chase the men so when you say all the good ones are taken or there aren't enough men out there or there aren't any men out there at all or there's too much choice I don't want to do with it don't worry about it seriously don't worry about it it's not your concern 
because your job, in quotes, as a lady, as a woman, as a feminine woman, is to discover what it is you really want and then become resonant, resonant with it. Not resident, resonant. That was different. Resident versus resonant. Because what it comes back to is the power you have, ladies, is magnetic. It's the ability to attract what you want. Now, it also means you get to attract what you don't want if you're not clear what it is. That's why sometimes you draw relationships to you that don't fit what you want. And I've done a whole litany of talks about the reason why you attract relationships that don't work. I'm not going to go into those in great detail, detail here, but I might hit, some, might hit some cliff notes if I need to. But I want to make sure you get this point and this clarity, this understanding that our um, the way that we're made, the way that we're made up, men and women. Susie, yes, it is a kind of surrender. It's more than actually, but I'll get to that in a moment. You're, you're getting ahead of me. <laughs> not actually, not, but yeah. We men, masculine, male embodiment people are more focused on, um, I don't want to say pursuit, but it's our job to be the, to court, do it that way. So I'll get back to surrender. So you're getting ahead of me, Susie. I'll get back to surrender. <laughs> Ladies, your power in the feminine is attraction, as I mentioned, to be the magnet, to pull in what you want. The challenge is, though, that you often have two things competing for that. One is that you don't think it's available, so you give up, and so your mind is telling you something that's not true. Secondly, you're running paradigms, programs, tapes, recordings from your past that aren't true anymore. So there's a couple of pieces to this. So for the ladies especially, now for men, our job is to basically grow up and become authentic, masculine, awakened, and caring men because women need us that way. Just saying that as a quick pitch so you know that. But ladies, especially ones who've done the work, sometimes you end up tying yourself in knots. I know this because I've seen it happen where you know too much and you start to do too many things to try and control what you want to have. And surrender, as Susie put it twice there, thank you, is a key component of this because what it comes down to is you need to know what you really want. And for, actually, let me back it up. Before you need to know what you want, you need to know what you don't want. Because so many pe women I know have been attracting relationships that don't work for them because they're not willing to be clear on what it is they don't want. So they go to the place where they don't want something and they get stuck there. So here's the thing. To start the process properly, and I'm, I'm, this is actually I'm giving you the first few steps of my course called um, Attract the Man You Want, because it is that purpose, it does that for you. But the first step is to get clear about what you don't want. Because when you know what it is you don't want, then you can start building what you do want. It's easy to make up a list of saying, well, I want to have this, this, and this, but if you don't get clear about what you don't want, it's going to keep nagging from the sidelines. What you don't want is going to keep um, interrupting your flow. So you say, I want to have this, this, and this, but what you don't want is over here, and you keep going over there because you're being pulled by the energy. So being clear about what you don't want is first step, because once you write it down, you start to flip the script, so to speak. You can take what you don't want and make a, a um, opposite list of what you do want. Because then from that place, you, when you know what you do want, you start building from there. But you start by basically canceling out every single thing that you don't want to start getting clear about what you do want. Now, it sounds simplistic, but this is a building block. This is, this is a, a um, where my course is eight modules, but it's like probably about 12 different elements within it that will take you step by step to build up to the place where you can become attractive to what you want. Again, it's called attract the man you want because it does that. So once you know what you don't want, then you've got to click, that will give you the opportunity to, to flip the script and know what it is you do want. And when you know what you do want, then you start building from there. Because first of all, all of this is internal. No, no other men are involved in this conversation, not part of this context. Your past relationships, your future relationships, none of that. When you're focusing on what you know, what it is you're doing, you're looking internally for what it is you value. What qualities do you want? What experience do you want? What do you really want to enjoy? Once you've done that, then you can start getting clear about what it is you want to create as a vision board. I'm giving actually the overview of the whole program, by the way. So you're going to get a shortcut. But if you want to do the whole course, I recommend it. I'll put the link in the comments at the back end. But you get clear of, again, what you don't want first, flip the scripts and what you do want. From what you do want list, you build a vision board, a mock up a collage an impression of what it is you want to create so you can see it and feel it more on an energetic level now the rest of the course is actually about practices about what you do in your home and the environment and how you create attraction for that vision you have it's actually how to make the vision more uh, multi-dimensional yes multi-dimensional i just call it a 4d approach because not only is it three-dimensional in the experience of your life it's also in the future bringing it into the present so it's a time thing as well so that's 4d very fancy <laughs> But that's the thing is you start from that place of getting clear about what you don't want. That's the first step you've got to be opening up to and be willing to face and be honest about. So being honest to your truth, what you really want is a first step. 
along the same path, and I'll mention this too because it's one of the things I talk about a lot in my work, and I know more people could use it, is practicing self-love. Because, and I'm gonna make it simple for you, is when, you're welcome Susie, and in fact the links will be in the comments, so if you want to check them out for yourself, you can do that, and anybody else who wants them. When you learn to love yourself first, that also turns off the need for a relationship. Because a lot of times what it is that drives us to need a partner is we want to feel love. But if you start loving yourself, that need is no longer there. In fact, then you become more attractive for a relationship because you're not needy for it. If you've been around people who are needy, you know what it's like when it's not comfortable. So as a woman, you want to attract the relationship you want to have. You want to attract one that you really enjoy and desire or want to have in your life, not one you need to have to feel okay. Make sense? So knowing that you focus first on what you really about yourself by loving yourself fills up your own batteries, so to speak. So you're not coming from a place of an empty battery. You become full so you can then say, what I want to add to my life is this. So when you're full first, your clarity is much sharper, more open and more honest because now you're in a place where you say, you know what? I'm okay as I am. I feel great as I am. What I'm looking for adds to that. So you're not coming from a place of lack. So these are fundamental pieces of the, when I do my coaching, but it's fundamental for your understanding how you can have what you want in relationship. Now it's true for other parts of life too, but I'm giving this context of relationship. So again, for the men, masculine, we pursue, we chase, we court, we do um, pursue. That's the word I'm looking for. Ladies, your power is in the ability to attract what you want, to pull in the right energy. So if you're not pulling in the right energy, something's got to shift. And it's that simple in a way. You know about what's happening, what you're attracting in your life, whether you're on course or off course. If you're getting what you want or you're not getting what you want. If you're not getting what you want, change what you're focusing on. And if you need help with that, that's where I come in. So some links I'm going to put in the comments to help you out. Again, I mentioned my self-love practice because I recommend that highly for everybody to really build that foundational platform to build the support structures for yourself. My self-love meditation is actually a mirror practice. Hi, Phoenix. Nice to see you. My self-love mirror meditation is actually audio tracks that guide you through a mirror meditation to come back to yourself. I'm just wrapping it up, but I'm giving you, I'm giving you the cliff notes. <laughs> so knowing what you want for a relationship has to come from within. That's why I say self-love first. Fill up your own batteries so you can become attracted to what you want, and then you can focus on what you want without being needy about it. Much different picture. Secondly, is to really get clear about what that vision is. Understand what you don't want first, so you can clear that out of the way and create what you do want. And that's, again, the attractive energy I'm talking about. So I'll put a link in the comments for my self-love practice and I'll put a link in the comments for my um, Attract the Mind You Want course because it's a great program to help you get what you want. It really, it's really potent. Yes, thank you, Phoenix. I'm glad you like it. Um, and thirdly, I'll put a link in the comments for a talk with me because if this is like getting a bit challenging, then we can have a complimentary conversation. It's my gift to you. We can have a conversation that see if it fits and it lines up and we can move from there. And I did mention my book because I got to talk about the, th I did talk about the, um, the rubber band practice or should, should me, the rubber band theory actually not a theory the rubber band issue <laughs> so that'll be in the comments too so you can get the book um because i recommend it hey i wrote it i'm a biased i love the book thank you for all the love phoenix i appreciate that um so basically simply put focus on what you want know what that is move forward in the direction of your dreams and you can have it when you're really clear about not being invested in making it happen as in you're unattached and you can also play so i hope this is making sense so again there's four links will be in the comments for you to tune in to and get um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, by the way, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, usually. Um, <laughs> well, Phoenix is absolutely tapping away. She's having a great time. So thank you for the love. I appreciate that. It's funny, um, sidebar, I used to be on Periscope before I was doing Facebook Lives three plus years ago. And that was the way people show their affection, where they continually tap on the screen to tap love. So you'd have love, like um, hearts popping up the screen continually. Facebook copied that. So I understand Phoenix. It's like flashback for me. <laughs> And a good one. Um, so again, the following is in the comments. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Civic time, seven days a week. Um, 5 p.m. shows, yes. Oh, you're new to my show. You didn't know I do this? This is episode 885. You missed a few. <laughs> Thank you, Phoenix. Um, so if you haven't seen my broadcast before, you can join me live at 5 p.m. Civic time right here on my personal page. Although if the, if it, if the lighting doesn't get any better, I might do it early. We'll see. I have to look at this in replay. Um, but my replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. You can like my page and follow them along there. Most of them are there. But Facebook doesn't, doesn't show all of them. That's true, you're my new friend. That is indeed true, Phoenix. Um, but you can definitely see all my broadcasts on my YouTube channel. So we've got a YouTube channel as backup. You can watch them all there if you go to my channel, which is Barry Selby. So it's, it's youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby.